I'll have a blue Christmas, Christmas without, without you. you. I'll have a blue, blue Christmas, Christmas without you. <laughs> Simon, this is for you. Welcome, everybody. This is the Bah Humbug episode here on Sea of Tranquility with the UK Connection. Simon Bray and Stephen Reed. I am Pete Pardo. It's Bah Humbug. Christmas or holiday music, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Welcome, folks. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Simon and Stephen. How are you? I'm oh, oh, oh. slightly more jovial than, than Bad Santa here. <laughs> I've, got, I've got better hair than Billy Bob Thornton, so... <laughs> <laughs> It's my um, own. As we say, I don't, so I'm going to say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> What's left is my own. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Well, you just as long, it. just as long as you come out of the cupboard and show off that hair, because we don't want you locked in the cupboard for some strange place <laughs> to discover, like on last week's episode, right? <laughs> I was never in the cupboard. <laughs> never. No. 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 Really? no. It's a cool place or to have closets in. or anything. I'm just no, nope, just nothing. That explains why your hands are not as soft as they could be, Simon. <laughs> For those of you who have no idea what we're talking about here, go watch last week's So that's all I'll say. So today, uh, it was uh, my two esteemed guests here and colleagues uh, wanted to do a sort of a uh, holiday-themed episode all about holiday music, where we talk a little bit about some of the good stuff. And some of the really bad stuff, because I think we all have holiday music that we just can't stand at all. So uh, we'll, we'll take care of that at the back end of the episode, I think. But there's some good stuff, right? I mean, there's there's <laughs> albums that we've been listening to since we were kids. Maybe some stuff we listened to when we were kids we don't want to hear anymore. There's some newer stuff that's okay. Um, I, I get the impression Simon hates most of it, but I'm sure we'll find out. Oh, yeah, there we go. We, we got we, The Grinch <laughs> is in the house, everybody. He is. <laughs> the, I have decided... That I might have to play good Santa here because do I love Christmas music? Of course I do. But I love it more than Simon does. <laughs> well, I will tell you, I, I'm going to start this one off today. I will tell you when I was a little kid, when, when Pete Pardo was a, you know, however, you know, like this big, that big, whatever. Uh, my parents, I, I don't have them on LP anymore, but my parents bought me two really, really cool records, uh, or records, as Simon says, um, and I used to play these all the time, to the point where I knew every word of dialogue on every song and what every skit that's on them, and I sadly still do. How about the chipmunks? Let's hear it for the chipmunks, hey, people. See, that's I mean, a great uh, stuff. You know, Simon wants his hula hoop and, uh, you know, <laughs> wants two front teeth and, uh, you know, all that good stuff. And, you know, I mean, it's just I still listen to this stuff and it brings a smile to my face. I play this in the house and my wife wants to shoot me. But, uh, you know, but I still because I grew up on it, I kind of like it. So the chipmunks will always have a special place in my heart. Alvin, Alvin, Alvin. OK, next. You're not buying that, Simon. No, not no. having that. He's not no. liking the chipmunks. No, I think they're not really a thing over here, are they? They never really took off. Well, they were for a while, but I think that you might have been losers. too too mature for them. Is that maybe the best way of putting it? That's it. I've been up on the second, third, or sixth wave of the chipmunks when the the, the newer cartoon. And one of them's called Simon. So yes, yes. Yeah, because that wouldn't be annoying for you at all. No, no, no. I, I'll be honest, I, I wasn't listening. I was just in my head saying, record, record. <laughs> record? Uh, that sounds see, right to me. What, what I can't work out, because I spent time on this last night. I spent quite a lot of time on this. And what struck me was if I was to say to you, I'm going to make you a compilation of music. And it's going to contain songs by Paul McCartney, Bruce Springsteen, Rob Halford, Status Quo, The Ramones, ACDC, Def Leppard, Alice Cooper, Twisted Sister, Cheap Trick, and I Can Go On, then you would say, oh, wow, there's going to be some great stuff on there. 
So why is it when it comes to Christmas, they make lamentable garbage, like <laughs> wonderful Christmas time? What is that all about? I mean, there is good Christmas music. I know that Peter wanted to start on a high. He wants to start on good Christmas music. Now, do you know what? I mean, Status Quo released a Christmas single. Is it good? Not really? Lillian Axe. Lillian Axe released a Christmas record. Does anyone remember Lillian Axe releasing a Christmas record? Who would buy that sort of rubbish? I'll tell you who. I would buy that sort of rubbish. That's who would buy this kind of rubbish. Christmas is all my fault, okay? I buy this kind of rubbish. Not a lot of it, but I do have some of it, okay? But there is good Christmas music out there. Can I find it? Not so sure. <laughs> I mean, there you... are songs that are Christmas related that I quite like. Magnum. Okay, so on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day. <laughs> that, that's, that's a good song. It's not very cheerful, really. And it's, it's not Christmassy at all. I mean, the Kinks have got a Christmas song called Father Christmas. That's great. And in the opening line, they basically question the existence of Father Christmas. And then you think, well, I wonder why I don't hear that song in the supermarkets at Christmas time. Now you know. Now you know. Relegated <laughs> to uh, FM classic rock radio. And that's it. <laughs> you just you, you listen to the opening line and you think that is never going to be played in front of children, ever. So yeah. they basically flushed that one away as soon as they started it. You made, a, you made an interesting point with the Magnum choice because uh, that is kind of wintry holiday mm -hmm. theme, sort of, but not so in your face. And that's the reason why this Jethro Tell Christmas album is so great and probably my favorite like Christmassy album ever because it's not that blatant. It's like holiday themes, and but it's not like, you know, Jingle bells and you know all that you know Santa Claus is coming to town and all that sort of stuff, right? It's just yep. they've chosen other songs that have lyrical and you know musical themes that will have you thinking about the uh, you know the holiday season. But I, I think this is absolutely brilliant. I'll just get it out of the way right now. This and the first Trans Siberian Orchestra album are the two that I always reach for in the holidays. My family doesn't particularly, well, you know, the, the kids kind of like TSO. My wife hates it, but then nobody, nobody likes the Jethro Tull album here in this house, except for me. Every year I play and they're all kind of like, what the fuck are you listening to? I'm like, is this, is this that guy with the flute again? I'm like, yeah, it's that guy with the flute. He has a name. Because, he has, come on. Yeah, because they did that thing that most bands don't do. They make Christmas music that sounded like their music. That's what they did. They didn't kind of think, do you know what? I need to dress up in a silly suit, which they probably did do, to be fair, and make it as twee as possible. It is, it's Jethro Tull, is what it is, and all the better for it too. Do you know, one of my favourites, see, so we will get to the stuff you dislike, Simon, I know because I know there's lots of it. You, you've lots. already been there for a start. But... <laughs> <laughs> it, as, as people will know, I, I quite like a certain band called Marillion, okay, and I'm a member of the web, so that's their fan club. So uh, every year you, you get four magazines, okay, and every year you get a free disc of some sort in the Christmas issue. Now, often it can be a double live album, fantastic, you know, it's, you can only get it through the, the fan club. It can be a DVD, there's usually a silly Christmas message on there somewhere, but sometimes they do give you, as this year, a whole disc of Christmas music. Okay, so they, they do do things like Stop the Cavalry. That's not a Christmas song. That's the most downbeat thing in the world. I quite like that song, but there you go. But Done by Marillion. Pardon? Done by Marillion. Of course, yes. That I am interested in. There you go, you see. And they do things like um, Lonely This Christmas. You're not so interested in that, let's be honest. Okay. Well, yeah. I would say is there is a child's Christmas in Wales. Okay, and that is... Dylan Thomas, okay, done to Marillion music. It's the most melancholy thing in the world, and it's become a Christmas tradition for me. I absolutely love it because Hogarth narrates it, he doesn't sing it. It's just re remarkably atmospheric. And it's a bit silly, but it's very nice. It's very tastefully done, much more tastefully done than, than, than that. It's on the inside. But that to me is how you do it properly. 
fact, you know, and there are other examples too. So, is there nothing you like, Simon? I'm prepared to show you my Christmas collection, Uwari Mrs. <laughs> Let's see your baubles then, okay. This won't take too long. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, um, somewhere I do have the single of um, The Darkness, Let, Don't Let the Bells End. Somewhere. Oh, don't tell me that's one of the ones you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm prepared to say that I saw The Darkness two weeks ago and they did it. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's... And I was massively entertained by the entire that's show, awesome. but that bit in, in, completely. But yes, I, I can't find it. So, you know, it's not here. But um, yes, so um, this one's a bit obscure. This is um, De Rotten, De Rotten Rosen. Yeah, De Rotten Rosen. There. It's really the, the De Totenhausen, the German punk band. Mm -hmm. And um, at the risk of being massively stereotypical, um, I don't think it's done with a massive sense of humour. It's done absolutely deadly straight. Deadly, deadly straight. You know, there's um, uh, they, are, they are a punk band. Um, Still in act, how they're going to act, you know, you know, in a Ramones kind, kind of style Um, The Little Drummer Boy in a punk kind of style -y. Oh, yeah. Mm, you know it makes sense very very much so um there's an unbelievably straight version of old lang syne yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> tremendous but there, there there is a song on there is a song on it um um vinax man uh, it's just the most sinister video you'll ever see just whoa you know, this is this is for kids for Christmas. What the what the heck? So um, I actually do mostly like it. You know, I could do without a cover of uh, yet another cover. I wish I could be Christmas every day because you know what? I kind of don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> what a with you, man. <laughs> so last week of the year is enough for me. That's it. No. Nope. <laughs> one one day is enough. Anyhow, yeah. I know. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I pulled it out and played it this year, but it does exist, and, you know, yeah, it might come out at some point. And come on, what must I have, Peter, knowing my taste in music? What must you have? Mm. you, you got to have a favorite. power. You've got to have a power metal Christmas album, right? I don't have a power metal Christmas album, because that would be horrific. But... So you're telling me you don't have Christmas Truce by Sabaton? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Is it which, surprisingly for Sabaton, is a war song. Yeah, spooky, haven't it? Yeah. No. Oh, come on. Look, I do have the Skinnered Christmas album. Oh, yeah. Well, I have that, too. I mean... Of uh, course yeah. I do. And um, you were saying about... There you go. There you, there you go. It's a work of unmitigated... But do you have that? No, because you can't get it in the UK without paying stupid amounts, and I did look uh, for it. And do you yeah. have this... I most certainly do not. No, because, you know, we really should do that, that Marshall Tucker show at some point that we keep talking about. Yes. But, you know, when I was, I was, I've done the research, but I didn't listen to the Christmas one. Oh, no, 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 no. What do you, what do you think yeah. of the Skinner one? Because I think this is a load of good time. I love it. Yeah. I genuinely, genuinely love it. Maybe not for the right reasons. No, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, okay, yeah. I, I don't have that. So what are the right reasons or the wrong reasons? Uh, well, let's just have a quick look down the track listing, show. You know, the first one's Santa's messing with the kid. Well, you know. Um, is that not on Howlin' Willie's album? No. <laughs> well, no, but you know what? You know, sounds a bit grim from uh, Father Christmas there. Yeah. Um, there's a... There's a version of Green Sleeves, which nobody ever needs to hear more than once. No. Um, Run Run Rudolph is just magnificent because it's got, um, oh God, what's he called from the Outlaws, Pete? Huey Thompson. Huey. It's got Huey Thompson on it, just real, really going for it. Um, it's got 38 Special on it, Hallelujah, It's Christmas. And it's got Skinnered Family Christmas Time at the end. Yep. Yeah. And I believe, oh, uh, I think uh, Charlie Daniels is on that track, if I remember. He is, he, he, he's also got his own version of Santa Claus coming to town as well. Isn't it? But uh, my younger uh, offspring once said, um, You know, it's Christmas when dad pulls out the Skinner Christmas album. 
<laughs> this is like the greatest what? redneck Christmas album of all time. Ye and indeed hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a lot, it, Stephen. It's a lot of fun. It's politically incorrect at every step of the way, and it's dumb as a rock if you know what I'm. But it's, but it's so much fun. It's. Well, you, you, I mean, you've set, definitely sold it on me more than if you told me you played it straight. Yeah. So I'm now interested. I, I, I must admit, I have, in the main, resisted these Christmas themed albums. I have listened to some of the classics that Rob Halford has put out over the years, which are what is commonly known as utterly horrific. <laughs> but realistically, I have avoided, the only one that really stuck out to me, whole album by a band, and I don't actually have it, but I do listen to it, is Cheap Trick, Christmas Christmas. I haven't heard that. Because they, they do things like, I wish it could be Christmas every day, but it sounds like Cheap Trick. They don't just Christmas it down. Do you know? They, they do things like Run Rudolph Run, and it sounds like cheap trick. Well, that's, what it sh- that's what it should do, right? I mean, yeah. that's why I don't like stuff like this. Like this is the uh, "We Wish You a Metal Christmas" and the headbanging New Year, which has all these great people on it, and it just sucks. And this monster ballad Christmas thing, I never listen to these. They're just lame, if you ask me. I don't know. Yeah, it's got to. They got to bring their own kind of personality to it, right? I mean, that's, that's why something like this is great. Steve Lukather, Santa Mental. You ever hear this? This is this is hilarious. <laughs> It's so good. It's just wacky Steve Luke with they're doing his like, you know, crazy guitar stuff and on um, Christmas songs. And it's it's a lot of fun. That's what a Christmas so, song should have be. Have you ever heard then on uh, as on one of these compilations somewhere, you've got Ronnie James Dio, Tony Iommi, Rudy Sarzo, and Simon Wright doing doom, 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 doom. God rest ye merry gentlemen. And it's that's great. That, right that's, that is Sabbath of Christmas. There's just no two ways about it. It's really good. It's really good. It makes no sense whatsoever. And that's really good. Yeah. That's how you do it. That's that one of the good great. ones on this one. Yeah. Zoom it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's one of my favorites to hear a legend like Ronnie James Dio just play it so down the line <laughs> it's unbelievable but it really works and it, they've made a doom classic yeah out of out of god rest you many gentlemen it's utterly nonsense but it's great this is pretty good too because again the wilson sisters like wrote a bunch of original music that's like in the spirit of the holidays really nice album i like this this is pretty good too because it is so different and yeah yeah there's a couple of traditional songs on here but for the most part it's just like all their own stuff which is which is pretty good simon what other uh what other ones do you love to death <laughs> okay. finished you finished no, there, there, are, there are no other no other christmas songs that i love to death no unless you mention um, something like that i haven't, that I haven't thought of the, no, Christmas. Is there no. nothing that you hear every year that, admittedly, we hear it four thousand six hundred and twenty-eight times every year, and I have for forty-eight years. So you hate them all anyway. But things like "Little Drummer Boy" by Bing Crosby and David Bowie. No, that's a great vocal. That's a great vocal. Both two great vocals. What I really love about that is if you watch that, the little skit that they do beforehand, it's clear that Bing Cosby has absolutely no idea who this chap is. No, you know? he he's been given the line to say about the Bowie family, and he actually has to look at David Bowie in the eye to think, I have no idea what your name is. Right. Do you know? And he, I think that Bowie's on the verge of mouthing it before it just clicks and it goes. But the vocal on that is utterly, it should make no sense at all. And it makes all the sense. No. Bing, Bing is probably thinking, you know, he's looking at David and he's like, you know, I don't know who you are, strange looking Englishman, but I was making Christmas albums before you were born, dude. So, you yeah, know. I think that is actually one of the lines in, in, in the sketch, to be fair. But yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I do like the part where he says to him, do you not like any of the old guys? And he, <laughs> and he goes, well, I like John Lennon and that guy with the beard, uh, Nielsen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. But I will admit, yeah. I have a soft spot for the old crooners. I mean, I because I grew up on this stuff like, you know, Dean Martin and mm-hmm. Frank Sinatra and, you know, Andy Williams. 
I, yes, I have all of these. Burl Ives, every one of them. Well, hold on, wait. Nat King Cole. I mean, these to me are the classic, classic Christmas albums. Yes, Perry Como. I got them all. I got them all. Hold on. You want more? <laughs> Tony Bennett. Do you want more? Oh, a newer guy, Harry Connick Jr. I have that too. I was on your side, Peter, and I don't want any more now. <laughs> James Taylor, you guys have seen enough? No, you're going to see more. How about Chicago? This is a lot of fun, actually. The Chicago one is a lot of fun. What's but, on the Chicago? Uh, Alfred. And no, it's not. <laughs> well, I think it's fun. <laughs> How about uh, the Charlie Brown Christmas? No? Vince Giraldi? No? Man, Tommy, no. Tommy, you are a hard sell today. <laughs> All right, here. All right, so how about we make fun of a couple? All right, because I don't like these at all. Gotta make sure my wife is not listening. If I never hear the Mariah Carey Christmas again, oh, yeah, see that, yeah, yeah, that's that's when I know it's time to put Christmas in the bin. Yeah, when I first hear that on the first of December, Michael Bolton, no, never got it. To be, to be fair to Michael Bolton, though, to be fair to Michael Bolton, anything after his first two solo albums, you can put that all in the bin. <laughs> yes. It's not just his Christmas music. He doesn't differentiate between Christmas music and normal music beyond the first two solo albums, which are great, by the way. After those two, it can all go in the bin. Yeah. 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 And, and the worst offender of all of them. I'm, I'm thankful my wife doesn't listen to this one anymore. Oh. Yeah. Insane. Does, that, does that not burn your fingers, Peter? No. I, it's, yeah. It's... I, I could probably secretly like, throw this in the garbage and she'd probably never know. Yeah. I, I think we should I might just do that. All back that movement. Oh, horrible. Horrible stuff. Really bad stuff. I know Steven's got more. I think I blew my water out of here, but uh, <laughs> of the ones that I want, I even want to talk about. I mean, there's more. I got more. I, trust me. I got I've, more. I've, got, I've got more that I like. I don't necessarily have ones to show because they tend to be individual songs, not so much albums. Okay. Uh -huh. I think that if you can remove the word Christmas from some of these songs, then Queen's Thank God It's, well, Christmas, that's a great song. I just happen to hear it every year at Christmas time, but it's still a great song. Once. You know? Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Uh, these are all overheard. Uh, don't get me wrong, okay? So This Is Christmas, John Lennon. That's a great song. I don't need to hear it every year, no. and I don't need to hear it every day for the entire month of December. Do you really but, not like McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time? I really dislike that song. Wow, a lot of people hate that. I, I mean, I love Paul. I like it. Is. Boom. Absolutely Boom. awful. Boom. 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 Well, yeah, the the arrangement is terrible, but I don't, I don't mind. It's catchy. I, I don't, know. I don't mind it. But I'm it's a... what I class as plastic fun. It's like yeah. when you're at a work do and they make you play games. So we're having fun now. Are you having fun now, everybody? Oh no! I, I, oh, absolutely! Oh, it's oh and it's as you say, the arrangement, those keyboards. I mean, they just scream, "Enjoy yourself!" Oh, <laughs> do you know? And how? I mean, I, I'm. I, I don't care about the politics. Okay, I'm not interested. In that. I'm a Boss fan. I like Bruce Springsteen. Santa Claus is coming to town is the biggest turgid piece of shit I've ever heard. That's not good. But a guy that is just got so much to say to do that oh yeah it's so horrifically bad yeah, that is just frightening what else do i like i quite like i quite like the fact that angel don't even call a christmas song anything to do with christmas they just call it the winter song do, 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 do. it's cheese or should i say it's velveta seeing as i'm now learning the ways of American cheese. <laughs> I mean, do you know what Velveeta is? That is, is it American it. cheese. Think of a craft cheese slice and dumb it down. Actually, it comes in a brick. It comes in a brick. Well, it comes in a brick. there's two ways to buy it. You can buy it sliced or you can get it in a brick. The brick looks like an orange bar, a long orange bar of soap, and it but it jiggles <laughs> like jello. And that's that's Velveeta cheese. It's like it's like a processed American cheese here. Yeah. And it was, it was created originally in Monroe, New York, the town that I used to live in, about a half hour from where I live now. So, yeah. It came up on In the Prague Seat the other day. We were all talking, we were all talking about Velveeta. We were talking about a cheesy album and we're all laughing. And Steven's sitting there like, 
I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so I called it. I said, Stephen, I said, that look on your face says you don't know what Velveeta is. <laughs> so. Yeah, we got we got eventually that I did kind of understand what it was. I just didn't understand the brand name or, or whatever. You guys probably tried. have something similar over there, I would assume. Yeah, we have. Yeah, but not in the quantity that it would appear that you guys maybe do. Which, you yeah. know, it's kind of got like one facing on the supermarket shelf on the top, hidden away. Yeah. Whereas you guys are getting it bricks. <laughs> we we do, don't really do bricks or anything here other than bricks. <laughs> And I don't even know if they still make the bricks. I know I grew up with the with the Velveeta bricks. My mother would bring that shit out and she'd have to slice it. And she'd go, and these big thick slices. Now I, I look at big thick slices like that. I'm like, mm, that's a lot of cheese. But, uh, yeah, but now they do it in, uh, yes, Simon has a record. <laughs> record. <laughs> record. That's right, isn't it? Record. Yes, that is that is correct. Yes, yeah, sorry, this is not the Christmas cheese special. That's correct. <laughs> record. Yes. Record. That's it. Yeah. Got so it. you like yeah. No Presents for Christmas by King Diamond then, Simon, don't you? No. no. <laughs> Not even that, wow. No, I like no. the concept. Surely, <laughs> surely you, you, like, you like Oh Come All You Faithful by Twisted Sister. 100% no. I don't like the, Chris, the Twisted Sister album. I don't like, there's a live album of it as yeah, well. But that's just, what is that? that's just we're not going to take it. With, yeah. with different artists, is it not? No. Surely you like the Megadeth Christmas advert. I'm prepared to go on record and say I don't actually like Megadeth. So yeah, but see, yeah. at least with the Christmas advert, which I think was done for some talk show, they they really just do a Megadeth Christmas. I mean, they actually do like a very short duet of "Honey, It's Cold Outside" <laughs> with someone else who clearly is not meant to know what Megadeth is all about. It's quite funny. Have a look. <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. We're not winning this fight, Simon, are we? No? So you don't like Naughty Christmas by Lacuna Coil? No. No? I, I mean, it's like all growly. I and, like and Lacuna Coil. I think you might like that. I think you need to revisit Naughty Christmas. Well, I will do. And I'll get back to you. <laughs> let me know what I think. I think we can you guess what, what he's going to think on that one. But yes. Yes. You tell me that you don't... Do you believe in Father Christmas? By Keith Emerson. No, no. Sorry, Greg Lake. Greg Lake, yeah. No, I like that one. No, I however, that. I am I am prepared to comment on that song. I, I've got a list of songs that I want that I would like to comment on. Well, please, um, do. please do. Excellent. You know, intellectually, I know that's a really good song. I really, really do. And the other day, and I do not know for the life of me how I was listening to it and something it was in my I my earphones in. I was walking, I was walking somewhere and and you know the arrangement's just fantastic and it's great. Mm. Then you think that's the 48th time I've heard that this morning. <laughs> and they're in they're in it, particularly in the UK, as Stephen said, therein lies the yeah. problem. You know, it's the same shit over and over again. I brought a little Chantel. This, this, my friends, is not mine. It's not mine. This is the original, now that's what I call Christmas album. Oh, wow. Yes, I remember that. 1980, some, 1985. It's not mine. It belongs to somebody in that direction. <laughs> and all virtually all these songs, and I'll comment on that, the one that isn't, you hear them all the time now. I've heard, because I've, I've been in a supermarket today, and I've been in a shopping centre, I have heard practically all these songs today okay. just today do they know it's christmas yeah okay i mean it's obviously the sentiment and and the the reason behind it is great yeah. but i think I, the first I, I one's bad that. but there's two more aren't there that nobody remembers and they, <laughs> they were utter bollocks oh just no fuck no 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 i wish it could be christmas every day what a great song but not every five minutes. Yes, yeah, I, I agree. I, I do agree. Ditto, um, Merry Christmas, everybody. Love that song, love everything about it. But again, you just can't go out the house without hearing it around here. You just can't. And for some deeply obtuse reason, they've released a video for it this year that isn't Slade not miming properly. <laughs> That's the best bit. 
That's the best bit. Slade not miming properly and Don Powell missing the drums and shit. <laughs> but no. Um, I, I'm actually now working my way through the Wham! Last Christmas. I, oh, see, yeah. See, that, that's... Hey, yeah. yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. I re <sighs> we all have artists that we can't stand, don't mm -hmm. we? Yep. Yeah. UB40, for instance. Oh, yeah. See, yeah, but that's... Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's like shooting fish in a barrel, not liking them, yeah. Yeah, because I know I know Stephen, you're a big fan of reggae. There must be some reggae Christmas music. And especially reggae played mainly by white guys. White people, yeah. With, yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. my favorite genre of all. Yes. <laughs> Remind me of your address afterwards, I'll just send <laughs> Yeah. Or we transfer it maybe or something. Um, but Wham are an, are an artist who I have to turn off as soon as they come on. Any, any, anyone. Yeah, any, I mean, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm not going to do that. And you know what? I really like George Michael. I, I like him. He's a good, well, he was a good socialist boy, really, you know, good politics, everything. But God, I couldn't stand his music. I really, really couldn't. And I, I appreciate what a great singer he was. But no, last Christmas, stupid, you know, <laughs> stupid little sleigh bells and, and the video where we're all having fun and we're not having fun it's forced shit is it you know, just, no, no no anyway there's only another 15 songs to go yeah, um, <laughs> step, into, step into Christmas step into Christmas step into yeah I hate that song yeah, oh, yeah okay. thanks Elton yeah. You're ruining my Christmas spirit here, Simon. I tried I'm really hard. Like it to continue, you know, Mike Oldfield. Like, mm, no. That's, that's, not. Not, that's not bad. Come on. No. No? Mm -mm. Is that just going to hear it all the time? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. Um, <laughs> on this record, on this, this, this rec record, it's a record, is it? On this very it's record. It is a record. Yeah. There's um record. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not from Burnley. Um, record. <laughs> on that there record. I'm not, I'm not from Rosendale either. No, I'm stop it. <laughs> We're getting more and more niche as we go. <laughs> yeah. Did the Mike Lads, Mike, Mike Lads make a Christmas album? Tick, three weeks on the trot. Um, yeah. Um, on this one. And you, you never hear it anymore. And you know, rock and roll, another rock and roll Christmas by Gary Glitchy. You never hear that one anymore. And I don't know why. I don't know why. I, I don't know. I, I just can't think. I believe there are other versions of this record where it's not actually on. Mm. Mm. Funny that, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah. 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 And then you, you got, got the shaft. <laughs> well, I'm thinking that's sweet. Anyway, no, this is not the right show for the comment that is in my head. <laughs> it's really no. not. Yeah. It's really not. I also wanted to refrain from going back to the song about Santa Touchman. Anyway. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. You can edit. You can edit this, can't you? It's good, yeah. Uh, wonderful, Christmas time. <laughs> yeah. wonderful Christmas time. I love that's just we've been through that. Shaking Stevens, who doesn't love a bit? No, me, I don't love a bit of shaky. Just, uh, just no, no, not me, me neither. Do you know who Shaking Stevens is, Peter? Does, yeah, they, does, does Shaking Stevens make oh, any impact. Super Super Robin, Robin, now, aren't we? You're so lucky. <laughs> He. This, well, is, this is my Velveeta moment on today's show. Yeah, I'm trying to think how you would describe Shaking Stevens. Well, you know, like, the um, 50s revivalist, I think. Yeah, but not, but it was not even good though. It was a 50s revivalist rock and roll done 80s style with double denim. That yeah, you know what? You, it's not double really denim. called shaking. Shaky, yes. He's not called shaking, is he? He's called Michael. Yeah, that's right. It's something, it's something yeah, along it's with Paris, isn't it? Yeah. And it was enormous in the eighties in the in the UK, wasn't it? Didn't yeah, it? absolutely huge. Yeah, yeah. I, I put it this way: if you really are desperate to catch him, he is actually on tour next year with Status Quo. <laughs> really? Mm. Yeah, that, that yeah. appears to have gone down like a bag of sick. Yes, I mean it was announced as almost kind of like, hey, guess what? You can come and see guys, and everyone went, no, thank you. <laughs> Coming to oh, half empty yeah. arenas near you soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's emptying arenas near you, yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. 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 I, I am quite vaguely prepared to say that I can tolerate a spaceman came travelling by Christoberg. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I don't think yeah. I know that one. That's, 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 some of his early shit's quite proggy, isn't it? Quite, you know. 
Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, he was he was quite serious until he got found his lady in red. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. Uh, like you say, uh, stop the cavalry. <laughs> really? It's a, not that festive, you know, because because it, it was I believe it wasn't it released without the um, jingle bell stuff on, and then yep. they put they put the stuff over the top of it, and suddenly it's a massive Christmas hit, and John yep. O'Leary doesn't have to work again ever. Uh, uh, but it, the, it's more the fact that it does seem to be included on these supermarket shop playlist things where there are people going wonderful Christmas time and then you follow that up with people getting shot on the front line and you're just kind of like did nobody ever listen to any of these lyrics does nobody understand what the message is here you know? and it, but you see people isn't that a great joyful Christmas song no no it's not <laughs> anything but oh dear it's a good song though yeah and yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ne nearly there um <laughs> lonely this christmas by mud mud knew what they were doing and they were taking the piss i think almost all the time weren't they with his yeah, with his yeah. weird accents and the, the, the one where he's, he's talking through to a doll I think uh, Les Gray knew, <laughs> really knew what he was doing. And the guitar, the guitarist with the, with the huge baubles for hearings who went on to write some of Kylie's big hits, they, they knew what they were doing. They, were, they, were, they really did. And I can, I can get down with, with a bit of mud. But just as a complete aside, there's mud too, isn't there? Yes. Yeah, that is. Yeah. For a while, was there not Slade 2? I think it was Slade 2 until Noddy basically went, I don't care enough to worry about Slade 1, so you could just be called Slade again. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Um, I am prepared to stand up. Finally, it's the last one for uh, When a Child is Born by Johnny Mathis. Definitely prepared to stand up for that one. Mm. Not great. I'll say that is a really yeah. weird collection of stuff on that album. Yeah, but that in the UK, <laughs> The, these are the staples, with a lot more, that has to be said. But these half of them would be brand new to people here. So it's like, you could send me that album. Like, this is, I would listen to that because that's that's not the kind of stuff that is on every Christmas holiday collection here that gets really yeah, I mean, it's mine, I would send it to, I'd walk across the ocean to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Please take this. Please, so I never have. I'll trade you. I'll trade. I'll tell you what, Simon. I will trade you that for... Uh, hold on, I grabbed the wrong one. Where is it? Oh, I lost my phone. Hold on. It's already shredded it, I think. This has been shredded live on air. Yeah, I, I must have thrown it out already. It is, I'll, 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 trade you, one, isn't it? I'll trade you the NSYNC one for that. Oh, oh yeah, I don't actually know if I know the NSYNC song. How does it go, Peter? I don't know. I, I, I blocked it, it up my memory. You sing it. I know you could sing that. Yes. Oh, you cued it up there, didn't you? <laughs> you just didn't. <laughs> I'll give, you, I, I, I'll give you the Michael Bolton one. How's that sound? I'll throw both of them in. How, how's that sound? I Two imagine it sounds a bit like um, somebody screeching a pen down a blackboard. <laughs> <laughs> Mariah imagine. Carey. I'll give you three for one. How's that sound? Three for one. Oh, Mariah Carey. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I give up. I give up. Yeah, I think I do have a couple of songs that kind of bullseye Simon's Christmas spirit. Do you know? Because go on, go on, I'm Christmas ready. with the Devil by Spinal Tap. <laughs> she, she, <laughs> come on, I mean, that, that has to be right up your street, no? That's fun. And, and where there's a Spinal Tap, there has to be a budget Spinal Tap. So bad news cashing in on Christmas. No? Never. I mean, really. the lyrics that liked bad news well the, see the, i didn't like bad news. didn't, didn't get the it. impression they were doing it f f with a, a proper love of the uh of the genre um i don't know if they did or not but I mean, what i will say is the lyrics to that sum up christmas music perfectly mm. it's all about putting money in the till for the really bad seven inch single and bagging everyone's cash for utter drivel and if there isn't something that sums up Christmas spirit, then I don't know what is. <laughs> yeah. uh, these days, it's the Christmas album, isn't it? We're going to put a Christmas album and we know it will sell X amount of copies for the next few years whilst we fuck off to the Bahamas and, you know, jobs are good, isn't it? It's just so cynical. Cynical and... Shit. I don't know how you could call anything 
that is done for Christmas cynical. I don't know how you could call Mistress for Christmas by ACDC cynical. I mean, that's, a, that's an utter classic from the band. It's definitely one, that, one of their best songs ever. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I love a Death Leopard ballad. They're one of the best bands that do one of those little acoustic ballads, you know, you know, this, this strummy strum thing, you know, Vivian Campbell actually getting to play for a wee while to, to, just at Christmas. And then in 2018, they released We All Need Christmas. And it's just awful. And you think, how could they, in their specialist genre, get something so remarkably wrong? But the video's all laughing and japing and knocking each other. And it's, I mean, it's utterly sick inducing. It's so, but this seems to be, I don't know why it draws this out of these legitimate bands. I mean, credit to them, but Paul Simon, I love a bit of Simon and Garfunkel, as I've covered on a previous show on, in the prog scene. Some of Paul Simon's solo stuff is really good. Some of it's not. But getting ready for Christmas Day, I mean, Simon, you need to listen to that song because that is the most joyless piece of Christmas music I've ever heard. Do you know, mm. it's just so downbeat and working class man from a multimillionaire that it really... I don't know what point it's what, what does that tell you maybe about how he really feels about the holidays, right? You have to wonder sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's because it was destined from the moment that, that, that someone hit record in the studio not to be a hit. So he's absolutely telling you how much he hates Christmas. Do you know? I think so, in a way. And when the, when the Ramones can do it wrong, and I've probably got a lot of hate for that, but Merry Christmas, I don't want to fight tonight which is also being killed by it, as someone I really like, Little Stephen and, and his Disciples of Soul. Oh, these songs are all just so bad. I was surprised by how much of this I was prepared to say, actually, it's okay. But I wasn't surprised. I mean, has anyone heard Bob Seger doing Little Drummer Boy? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just... Even the Carpenter's Christmas song is utterly terrible. I mean, Merry Christmas, Darling is just awful. And, and I, love the, I love the Carpenters. I was going to say, the Carpenters didn't get much wrong. They really didn't, it has to be said. But it's just... Because I thought, I don't really remember that. I'll play that. Because it's bound to say, do you know what, actually, Stephen, you love this stuff. <laughs> it's terrible. It's so bad because clearly these artists didn't want to be doing this rubbish. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think there was a time where they were all expected to crank out either a Christmas song or an album back, especially like in the 60s, 70s and into the little bit of the 80s, right? You don't see it as much anymore, but yeah, back then, if, if I were to look and see all the release dates of a lot of the stuff that I have, it's all right around the same time. Yeah. And a lot of back then, they made a lot of money doing these. So now it's just like, you know, you have to wonder. Yeah. It's like, well, we're not selling any of our regular albums. Why don't we just put out a holiday album? Maybe that'll be, catch lightning in a bottle, right? Yeah. Nope. And that is maybe why I dislike Wonderful Christmas Time by Paul McCartney so much, because that feels like it means it. Do you know? I think that that was, they genuinely thought, you know, we've written a great song here. And it's really not a great song. It's really not a great song. Do you know? From one of the most legendary musicians that we'll ever see. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, it's not quite the frog chorus, but it's trying its best. <laughs> No. <laughs> and for anyone that really, if you want to, I think, experience the cynicism of Christmas music, and he's not someone we talk about a lot here, but his early albums, in my humble opinion, have a lot to say. But Brian Adams, Brian Adams' early albums, up until that he would have a 17-week number one in the UK with Robin Hood, his music was quite decent. The Reckless album, is a fantastically good album from start to finish. I think there were 72 singles off it, and every one of them got into the top 10 or something like that. But that's a really good album that really stands up. Now, he did Christmas Time, which is awful, but listen to a song called Merry Christmas by him, and it's just... It must rank up there one of the worst pieces of music by an established artist who doesn't need to be doing that that I've ever heard. It's one of those songs that you think, it can't be as bad as I remember. And then you play it and you think, that's why I don't think it's as bad as I remember, because I've tried to blank it out of my mind. Exactly. Yeah. Must it's... forget this. Oh, so I would say, 
about you, Brian Adams. I've heard his new single. Mm hmm. Okay. No good. Yeah, I, I did qualify and say that he was good. Yeah. A long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, can I, can I, I, so I, no, no, on you go. I'm can, just, I, can I introduce two words into this discussion? Mm -hmm. Two words that ordinarily fill me with dread, but at this time of year, fill me with this Christmas spirit that, as you can see, I've got. And those two words, that was good timing, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> those two words are Chris and Rhea. Driving home for Christmas. Yeah. What? <laughs> Jesus Christ on a bike. Um, oh, right. Firstly, right, right. Christmas for me is not Christmas until I, I have seen or heard Driving Home for Christmas by Chris Rea because I have a competition with my best slash only friend. So which one of us can, can say that we have heard uh, Driving Home for Christmas first? First. The other week, yeah, first. Yeah. And the other week we were in a... We're in a pub in um, in Clitheroe, getting even more um, parochial. And I noticed while we're at the bar that even though it was you know mid November that the Christmas Channel was on, and I positioned myself so that I could look over my friend's shoulder, just in the what actually turned out to be vain hope that Chris Rea would turn up and I, and I could check the picture and send it to him while I was sort of the boy, but he didn't. But and it, get, get this, right? So I did, well, when we put our Christmas tree up this year, we put the Christmas channels on and I, and I stood, my contribution was just pretty much to go, well, that bubble looks all right. Change the channel, <laughs> searching, searching. And, and finally, Chris, tur Chris turned up. I took the picture, sent it to me, and then he, he changed the rules. He said, you can only have it if you're driving in your car, driving home, because you get it, and take a picture of it when, obviously, safely, kids, when you're in the passenger seat. Yes, obviously, <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, yes. You know, definitely, definitely, um, goalposts moved on that situation. But obviously, I still won, because I, I did see it first. But just, you know, I would like to talk about the video for driving home for Christmas. The second video, have you seen it, Stephen? Has anyone seen it? I don't know if I have. If, uh, this would be another moment I've blanked out of my mind. Well, they, they, in around about 2009, 2010, they, they made an all-star um, video remake of the song. I'm just, just going to toss out a few names for you um, that were in the video for the all-star remake. In Aid of Shelter, which is always a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the disc jockey Mike Reed. Wow, this is niche already. I mean, no, I mean, you will know who Mike Reed is, Peter. And to be fair, most people watching this, uh, probably including Mike Reed, won't know who Mike Reed is. Exactly. <laughs> did he? Did he? David Hamilton. Was yeah, there anybody yeah. here that was famous prior to like nineteen seventy eight? Yeah. He, well, he was most famous for having a Weetabix on his head, wasn't he? I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. You know what a Weetabix is, Peter? Yeah, you know what a Weetabix is? Yeah. Uh, Peter's no, frozen. Peter's frozen. Shredded, just... shredded biscuit sort of yeah. breakfast thing. I'm having a severe velvet at the moment. I'm like, I don't yeah, know it's who these people are here. <laughs> a very bad comb over. Until I, until, I, until I finish, just, just think records. Yeah. Records, yeah. Um, Martin Shaw, the really respected actor. Yeah, just no. I know him. There you go. He's in the video. Gail Porter. She she transported herself from the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lizzie Cundy was once married to a footballer. Who? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The recently dead. Um, <laughs> wife, wife that was more Blair. subtle ways of breaking that news, by the way. Yeah, it was 90. It was 90. Yeah. Lionel Blair and <laughs> Harold Decker from Tapau. Just the 30 years later. I mean, what the... What? <laughs> I realise this is topical well, enough, well, topical enough suppose, 12 years later, but what the heck? The, the question I need to ask is, were the people who were in the video 
actually in need of help from the charity shelter, <laughs> which is a homeless charity. I mean, <laughs> it's a charity for people who are down on their luck and need help getting a roof over their head. I think that's what these people were, no? Oh, Martin Shaw was never in short of work, has he? Maybe he was just helping the homeless, I don't know. Yes, but, uh, yeah. That was an altruistic move from him, yes, absolutely. Great. Yeah. And I, I, huge, yeah. You can't mention driving home for Christmas without the symmetry, the Chris Rea symmetry, which is, of course, the fantastic album, The Road to Hell, because <laughs> the two just seem to, to merge perfectly, because <laughs> you get one song and immediately he takes you to the other one. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. Did he make Road to Hell too? He did make Road to Hell too. Yes, absolutely, he did. Must have been a creative law going on there. Eh? Possibly. I think that's a bit mean. You make that sound like every band that's had an album with the, with the word two next. I'm like Operation Mindcrime Two had a creative. Yeah, okay. Fair 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 of hell three. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Point, point three. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So bad yeah. song and bad video. Which is okay song. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. You know, Stephen Stephen performed it brilliantly there, and uh, you know it's very much something that me and my children go for Christmas. Yeah, just yeah, fine. <laughs> so, so I gotta ask. So you guys, so you and your buddy have this kind of little bet thing going. So what do you win if you're the first one to? Uh, to hear it first. You know how smug I am? I get, I get smugger. I can, ah, I can so it's a satisfaction smugger. thing, got you. Okay, all right, cool, all right. Yeah, that it's really surprises me, Simon, that really surprises me. Satisfaction. <laughs> all then. Oh, dear me, so, I mean, there is more. Do we want to cover more? I don't know. I mean, has anyone heard Viking Christmas by Amon Amarth? No. No? 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 Okay, fair enough. I can, I can live with that, knowing that, that nobody else is full of Christmas spirit enough to, to, to listen to that kind of thing, you know? I mean... After I'll this episode, I'm taking all these CDs and putting them back in the fucking closet. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't even brought them out for the year yet. It's like, oh, geez. <laughs> Well, I mean, the funny thing is, we're, we're doing this episode, and it's what December sixteenth, and I think we've already been hearing some of this stuff for a few weeks now. Oh. And it's like, and it's not; it's barely the middle of the month. It's like, oh god. It, it's as Simon will attest. It, there does seem to be some sort of vague loose truce in the UK, but as soon as it hits midnight on the first of December, so as soon as we click into December, it's open season. There are radio stations out there, not that I listen to much radio these days, who will play wall-to-wall -wall Christmas as soon as December begins. Yeah. And it really is a collection of roughly 30 songs. Yeah, that's the same way here. Over. I think it starts and, the day after yeah. Thanksgiving and here. Most of it, yeah, most of it is on the album that Simon spoke about. And that's my main problem. There are some good Christmas songs. I mean, I, I made kind of little sub-genres here, okay? So I did put, not as bad as hearing them, 4,269 times a year have made them out to be, okay? This is and what the punters came for, your lists. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody came for my lists, not even me. But, I, I mean, you've mentioned them all already. I mean, Slade, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's a good song. That is a good song. It's just a Slade song, but I've heard that every... I mean, I did have the seven-inch single at one point. Where it's gone, I don't know where I broke it, but it's gone wherever it was I broke it, because you just think, I don't need to hear that ever again in my life. I can't remember what the B-side was, but there you go. And I mean, I do think that I Believe in Father Christmas is a great piece of music. Our perennial favourites, Cats in Space, I've given it a go this year. And it's quite good. But I can't get any more excited about it than that, even from a band that I love, who do it quite straight and they give it a bit of Cats in Spaciness. And, you know, and that always has to be a good thing. But you hear that song, you hear it too much. It is for charity. I'm all for that, you know, and the guys are great. So fair play to them. But it, it's difficult to hear these songs over and over and over. Wizard, I wish it could be Christmas every day. Why well, is a good 70s UK glam stompathon? I don't ever need to hear it ever again. And I can't quite work out the glee that people get from these songs. That's the bit that confuses me. Do you know, it's not just 
that these songs are, are, are bad. They're not bad. But people, oh, turn on the Simon when they come on. You know? And it's just, oh, your heart sinks when you realise you've got a... And I, I'm, obviously, we all want rid of COVID. But if there's one good thing that came out of lockdown, and lockdowns, uh, or non-lockdown, lockdown, stay at home while you go out that we seem to have in the UK, is it, I don't hear this stuff quite so much. True. I now have, I mean, as a guy that worked in retail for a long, long time, I had no control over the off button. So you, you worked with this stuff from seven o'clock in the morning until seven o'clock at night at this time of year. Just the same 15, 20 songs over and over. But then on, on your occasional day off, because they stopped cracking a whip on you, you went somewhere else and heard all the same bloody songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And that, that, is, that blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. And there you go. And it will do it until... I pop off this mortal coil because it will not end. But it, no, it won't. It won't. Horrific. Yeah. And uh, as I say, you can't hunt for good heavy metal Christmas songs. Most of them have very little really to do with Christmas. It just happens to have a loosely festive kind of... It's like those movies that appear to be on in my house at this time of year. And it'll be like the Christmas movie channel. And it's not, it's just the same talentless actors and actresses who are down on the luck. People like, and I'm a massive Babylon 5 geek, by the way, but people like Bruce Boxleitner, who just can't get a gig anymore, who turns up in a 2018 film pretending that it's about Christmas because somebody fell out with someone, but they love them really, and it happens to be December. He's got a sad sack story. He's down in his life, but all of a sudden Christmas came and woohoo, everything is great now. All my problems are gone. It's solved, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that that that's that's Christmas music in a movie. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but there you go. Yeah. I mean, well, I can take you through the list, but you don't want to hear that. We've covered most of it anyway. Yeah. We've covered yeah, most yeah. of it, I think. Sure. There's some good, there's some bad, there's some ugly. I mean, that's just the way it goes. And uh, after this episode, I I don't think I'm interested in hearing any of this stuff. Now. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. I appreciate that. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules. Woohoo! <laughs> so there you have it, everybody. Uh, a little discussion about uh, holiday music. Uh, let us know what you think of holiday music down in the comments below. Some of the stuff you do like, what you don't like, the good, the bad and the ugly. So I want to thank uh, Simon and Stephen for joining me here today and uh, visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we are on YouTube all the damn time. You never know, you might see some reviews of some prog holiday albums and metal ones because we get them all the time for review. It's just like, oh, great, new Space Rock Christmas theme collection. Oh, the new prog Christmas collection. Rick Wakeman's doing holiday theme music. It's like, this is all the stuff I've seen over the last year. So uh, it's still coming out, folks. So uh, either avoid it or not. And uh, we'll see you real soon. For Simon Brain, Stephen Reed, I am Pete Pardo. Good night, everybody. Take care.